Hey everybody, Jonathan here from Corsac Props. Today I'm going to show you a little bit of a project I've been working on and I want to sort of go over a little trick that I've been working on that uh, is, seems to be working out pretty good. So uh, effectively we have a dark helmet. Now that's a pretty big uh, build if you were going to 3D print it and uh, we've been asked to design it uh, for a specific 3D printer, the, the Prusa to be exact. Um, so what I need to do is create uh, sections and we've started splitting this body up so that it fits inside the the sort of confounds of that printer. But the problem is we need registration and a little bit of added strength. They're going to be using some glue. If I was to do it, I would also sort of seam the insides in a, in, a, in a way that would work really good. But we want to keep the custom minimum. We want to get everything printed really well. And one of the things that you can do uh, when you're splitting a big helmet or something like this up is to use, let's turn all these off here, uh, sort of a cone-shaped uh, registration mark. Uh, you need a male and a female. You need to kind of figure out which angle this is going to be printing at. Uh, so I've been working on that. This piece is all one. And I found a neat trick. So I thought I'd do a little video here to show you how uh, we did this. And as you can see, let's see, we'll turn on this one. We have these cones. And the cones are pretty they're easy to design if you really wanted to you could drop uh you could create a a sketch here draw the circles extrude them taper the extrusions that that's just a bunch of steps but i found a little bit of a hack so we're going to show you uh sort of what we're doing to make it a little faster uh now i've been working on these two here because this one is done but these two slices up here need to be configured to have holes in them so this one already has cones in the top so we're going to print from this this edge out so we need them to be female cones on the bottom because if you print them uh show you here and simplify we're printing them at a 45 degree angle so they don't require support and they just create this nice extrusion point and even if they're on the side here they'll print pretty nice uh, at a 45 degree angle. So, turn this slice off here. That one off too. And here's where the tricky bits come in. So we have our edge here. We create a sketch here. We could do some other stuff, but we're not gonna do any of that. What we are gonna do is create a hole. Now we need some special settings for the hole. Uh, we need it to be a simple hole type with the drill point of, of an angle, not flat. So this is actually pretty standard. Now, once we click on the face, you see we're creating a hole and we've given it just a little bit of dimension so that it generates the hole. It, it wouldn't generate it at zero for whatever reason. Uh, but a little bit, you know, this is less than a layer height. It's just 0.1. Uh, so even if it does have a little bit of a, as you can see, it has a little tiny bit of a, a lip there, but that, that'll, come out in the wash basically we have our dimensions or diameter which for this slice is about three millimeters and now we can just kind of wiggle this around and do that we want to set this angle to 45 because you might be able to go up to 60 but that's going to make a really sharp point so 45 works pretty good most printers can do 45 without any issue and any support and we're just going to generate one of those and it's going to chew on it because I'm recording. Uh, it was going faster before I started recording. But we can just kind of come down here and I'm not really worried too much about making them super even. I just sort of need that registration. Kind of like if you were to do a like a mold, you need just something to make sure that all the pieces go together exactly as you want them. Yeah, let me create a couple more here. Uh, some of the th areas are thicker on this helmet. I'm not entirely sure why it decided to thicken certain areas different, but um, so far it's working out pretty good. 
at three millimeters, but if I do have a thicker area, I do want to make it bigger, so I'll make it like five. Uh, so whatever really works for the model that you're looking to do, whatever the surface is. Because again, this is getting split up into like eight or ten pieces, so we really need quite a bit of registration on it. And it was just going to take forever to do it if I create sketches and draw holes and blah, 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 or in, in all of that jazz. So, all right, now we've got the sort of negative space that we want to use. And we could come in here in our, so like for instance, I don't like the positioning of this one. I can come in and sort of work it out a little bit using my history bar down here. But so far I like it. Now, this is where the kind of tricky bit comes in because how do you create the positive for this? Okay, so we have our, our, our negative space. So what we're gonna do is create the positive space. And how are we gonna do that? That's kind of the interesting part. We're going to create a sketch and we're going to create it on this plane. And so it's auto, uh, because of my settings, it's automatically projected all of the uh, geometry for that plane. Now I'm going to just come in here and sort of select all of my little holes. And we really just want to get. pretty much everything in one go. And then what we're gonna do is extrude this. So we can go ahead and hit extrude. And we wanna come basically back into that hole as deep as we can. So we're gonna go like this. We're gonna create a new body. Make it negative four millimeters. I'm going to create a new body inside of here. I hit OK. I'm going to take this and make it disappear. Uh, I can then combine. Uh, I've also done it where I've just extruded it and had it go ahead and auto combine into this other part. But um, either way it works. I just didn't know exactly which face this was or which body this was. I should have looked it up previously. You don't want to keep the tools. I'm going to hit OK. So now we've got these pegs, and on the other side, number 23 here, we've got the holes. So we just do a combine operation of this body with this body. We do a cut operation. We want to keep the tools because we don't want to lose this one. And we hit OK. All right, now when I turn that off, we'll check. I have been having, because it's so thin, I've been having an issue where if I over extrude these points, they pop out the top and I get like a little surface. But for the most part, now we've got all of these little cones created and they perfectly match our other piece. And we didn't have to go through and kind of match them up and make everything sort of mesh really well. And it's quick, it's easy. You could do the same thing if you were doing pegs. You would just um, say create the hole and you could create your own pins. We're not going to use pins for this because we really don't need them. But if you wanted to do a flat hole, uh, and then that would just create essentially this hole. But because it's flat, we're going to go ahead and change this to say three millimeters. And that creates that negative space you want. Then when you are done with that, you could come in, hit extrude, come out to the top and create new bodies and then you just join that piece to the other one or make it come out. Um, actually, what I would probably do is make that say come out six millimeters. And then I would take this other surface over here and we would combine that with the little peg that we just created. So that way you could do either one, um, either method. And I just thought this was kind of a neat little trick that I've sort of developed as I've been uh, you know cutting up this model and working on it and uh, But yeah, that's uh, how you create You know cones and registration inside your 3d prints uh, It does get tricky. You kind of have to think outside the box I keep exporting the pieces to make sure that I know they're gonna fit specifically within the spot inside um, our build volume and testing them for all of that jazz 
so that we make sure that we can still print these pieces you know without a bunch of support without all of that and then once it's all seamed together you just you know you can just they'll just stick right together as soon as they're printed so that's about it for this one uh, i hope this helps you guys uh if you want to see more of this stuff let me know if there's specific questions you have on fusion 360 or whatever let me know that as well and uh we're going to try to do more of this kind of shorter stuff uh to get some videos out on the channel so thank you very much i'll catch you next time